Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making a Finnish cheese and it's known as Lipa Julsto. So just imagine this, you've landed in Finland, your tummy is rumbling, what kind of food do you seek out? Do you go north to Lapland and seek out their world famous cheese, Lipa Julstol? Of course you do, and I am going to show you today how to make this Finnish squeaky cheese. So Lipa Julstol is a traditional Finnish cheese, it's, it's sometimes called Finnish squeaky cheese. Uh, and as you can see here, it's all brown, it's been under the griller or broiler, as they call it sometimes. And this cheese smells absolutely divine. I started making it at about 10 a.m. and it's now 4 p.m. and it's ready to go and ready to eat. Anyway, let me show you how I made Lipa Ustal. So start off by sanitizing all of your equipment. And the milk I'm using today is from Inglenook Dairy. Now one important ingredient is cloudberry jam, see if you can source some of that. The ingredients for Lipa Julstol is 4 litres or 1 gallon of whole cow's milk, I'm using pasteurised unhomogenised, 2 teaspoons of non-iodised salt, 1 quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of calcium chloride, diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 millilitres of single strength rennet. I'm using IMCU 200 in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And that's it. That's all the ingredients you need. So heat the milk to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. Now I directly heated it on the stove top. And once it's reached the target temperature, turn the heat off. So now we're going to add the salt. This is just my normal coarse non-iodized salt, but you can use any salt that doesn't have iodine in it. So two teaspoons there straight into the milk and give that a bit of a stir to dissolve the salt. And then add calcium chloride. If you're using pasteurized milk, if you're using raw milk, then there's no need to add the calcium chloride. Now we're going to add the rennet. Just pour that in whilst you're stirring. And stir for no more than one minute. So we're going to pop the lid on and allow the milk to set for 40 minutes. So after 40 minutes, we're going to check for a clean break. I'm going to cut the curds into 2.5 centimetre or 1 inch cubes as best you can. Now notice I'm cutting the curds there whilst I'm just stirring it here initially very, very gently, not trying to break the curds up or anything. They are fairly large anyway. That's it, minimal stirring. Now we're going to allow the curds to heal for 5 minutes. So five minutes later, take the pot over to the draining area and line your colander with a cheesecloth and using a ladle, scoop them into the cheesecloth to drain. So I'm just breaking up any large bits there with the edge of the ladle. Now, I did try and drain this a little bit, but made a bit of a mess. So I decided not to let it drain naturally. So pop a lid on to keep any dust out. And we allow that to drain for two hours. 
Now one hour into that two hours of draining, I just broke up the curds with my hands because I thought that it wasn't draining way enough or quickly enough. Just a quick pat now and put the lid back on again and then drain it for that extra hour. So this is after two hours. You can see the curd starting to dry out a little bit. Just gently squeeze some of the whey out and then flatten the curds again with your hand. Try to make it into a dish sort of shape while it's draining. Then put the lid back on and drain for another two hours. So that's four hours of draining in total. You don't want the curds too dry. So place a dinner plate on top of the cheese and then gather up the cheesecloth and flip the cheese onto the plate. This is the easiest way I found to put the cheese onto the tray that I'm going to be in a minute. So remove the cloth. Now grab some baking paper or parchment, whatever you call it in the country you're in. Place a cooling rack on top of an oven tray and then place some parchment or baking paper on top. Now I found that the easiest way to do this was to put the parchment on top of the cheese and then flip the cheese onto the baking paper. And that seemed to work okay. Get rid of the plate, you don't need it at the moment. So just make sure that's all flat. And if it's lost its shape, you can just, I'm just trying to put that in the middle. You need to reshape it into a circle if necessary. So once you're all happy with that, we're going to place it under the griller or broiler. And I've got it on max temperature for my oven. And we're going to watch it the entire time. So I've sped up this footage so you can see what happens. The cheese will start to flatten as you can see there and whey will seep out. So it does release quite a bit of whey during this first grilling session. Now I just gently tipped it to the side so it went onto the tray itself. Now at one stage it'll start to uh, stop flattening and start to brown. So it took about 20 minutes for the first brown spot to appear under my griller. Maybe I didn't have the tray high enough, but I didn't want the paper to catch on fire. So it's starting to brown now all over the top of the cheese. Now it took about 30 minutes in total to brown the entire surface of the cheese. Now I didn't want it to go black, but I thought brown was enough as per the instructions I found. So that looks pretty good. So once brown on top, remove it from the griller or broiler. Be very careful. And carefully drain the very hot whey. Now be careful because it nearly slipped off the tray so I had to hold on to the cooling rack and it seemed to stay there all right. So place another sheet of baking paper on top and another cooling rack and then just flip it over. So we're going to grill the uh, the bot what was the bottom, now it's the top. Just tucking the paper over so it drains a little bit better than the first time. And we're going to place it back in under the griller or broiler. And we're going to watch it to make sure it doesn't burn. Don't walk away and get distracted. This is very important. Now it did brown a lot faster this time. It only took about 10 minutes for the entire cheese to be browned. And I had a much more even coating as well. So once it was browned entirely on the top, I took it out of the oven.
So be careful because it's very hot. I used oven gloves there as you can see. And now I'm going to plate it up for serving. Don't touch it Gav. It's very... Be careful, transfer it to a plate for serving now. Now I'm using a an egg flip just to get that on there. Very nice. Hot cheese and bare fingers. The tray wasn't, it cooled down pretty quick. So allow it to cool down for about 10 minutes and then eat when warm. So that's how you make Lipa Yusto. I hope I'm saying that right. I've watched enough Finnish cooking videos today to figure to see, think that it's pretty well on par. So the cheese has been grilled. Uh, let's just cut a quarter of it. It's supposed to be eaten warm. So that's what I'm doing. So a very simple cheese to make as you saw. Just going to put a piece on the plate and traditionally it's served with cloudberry jam so i managed to get my hands on some of that all the way from finland and we put a dollop onto the lipa yusto and then we're going to eat it <laughs> now i don't quite know whether you use a knife or fork or what have you um, I will just use the knife and spread it on there a little bit. Very uncouth, isn't it? But finished squeaky cheese. Now, apparently, this will store in the fridge and you can reheat it in the microwave for five days, up to five days, and it'll still be squeaky. But here goes nothing. Mmm. Definitely squeaky. And that jam on top. Oh, it's amazing. Mmm, delicious. Let's try that a little bit more, shall we? Mmm. Beautiful as a dessert. Mm. Mm. Finger licking good. That is an amazing cheese. If you haven't made Lipa Ustal before, then I highly recommend it. A great little cheese. Um, probably a good one to teach kids all about cheese making as well. So nice and simple. Now, I'm just going to finish off this bit and then I'm going to show you another way how they serve uh, Lipa Yusto in Finland. So I'll be right back. So another name for this cheese is actually uh, coffee cars or cafe cars. I'm not sure how to say that, but it just means coffee cheese. Uh, and what the Finnish do is they take a bit of the Lipa Yusto and just pop that aside. I've got a black coffee here with uh, one sugar in it because I do like it a little bit sweet. And we simply put the pieces of the cheese into the coffee. Now, I don't know what this does. I dare say the cheese will become a little bit soft. It's still quite warm from being out of the oven. I don't know how many to put in there, but let's put a few in, shall we? <laughs> All righty -o. So we've got a few bits of the cafe cars in there now. So there it is floating in the coffee. Let's, well, let's taste it. <laughs> oh, those crazy fins. Love yous all. Let's try some. Oh. That's really soft and smooth. Oh, that's just different, totally different. Obviously no cloudberry jam on it, of course. Oh. I tell you what, if I went to Finland and would serve this up, I would love it. Well, I love it now. 
it is delicious. Um, I'm glad I put that sugar in it. Just put one teaspoon of sugar in the black coffee. But you can see that a lot of um, uh, oil from the or fat from the cheese has come out and is sitting on the top of the of the coffee. But that it's lovely. Mmm. Coffee flavored cheese. Who would have thought? Amazing stuff. Anyway, that is a leap of your stole. Thank you very much for watching, Curd Nerds. Uh, if you want to see any more videos, don't forget to subscribe and you'll get notified of other cheesy videos that I make. And if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. The Cloudberry Jam, that was amazing, as well as this amazing Finnish squeaky cheese. So thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.